to another video here on Free Will Photos. Today, we are going to do a quick edit. This is a photo that I took at the Empty Sky Memorial in New Jersey. It's right across the Hudson River from the lower Manhattan area. This is the before image that we're going to edit, and here is the after image. Now, like I typically do in these quick edits, I never really recapture what I've done in the past, but this is just something that I was working on and said, you know what, I wanna show you some of these techniques. The very first thing that I did was I cropped the image, and the crop really was just to keep some of this outer uh, portion of the Empty Sky Memorial in the left side of the frame, as well as really focusing in on these leading lines that take us to the sunset and this really bright highlight in the center of the photo. Uh, same thing with the path here. That's all that I was really going for with this. So I'm going to go ahead and hit apply. So now we have our working space. And then the very first thing I did was I hit AI match. Now, AI match darkens the overall photo. And I did shoot this underexposed intentionally. If we go to the info, you can see I was at 320, 160th of a second. And then also our one 160th of a second. And then I was shooting at F8. This was at sunset. It was pretty dark. Um, but then I'm going to change my camera profile to landscape. And this just brings a lot of drama into the overall image. And I really, really enjoy this. And this is where we're going to take our time to really enhance the photo. Uh, so the next thing, obviously, I want to really pull out these colors. So I'm going to hit add filter and then hit color enhancer. And when I do that, I'm going to uh, grab my adjustment saturation slider here or picker, and I'm just gonna click in here and really pull up the saturation on the colors that are being targeted. And I pulled up the range quite a bit. Uh, and this port, or this port, wow, can't talk. This part, I spent a good amount of time just playing around with the colors and really trying to figure out what colors needed to be saturated in order for this to work out. And then I also brighten them up so that way they kind of shine through uh, with a majority of that work and the look coming out of the, uh, the red channel here. Now, because the sunset is usually full of a lot of oranges, uh, as you can see, if I pull this, then that really changes the color overall. I didn't mess with the hue of my oranges because I do like the gradation uh, change between the purple, the red, and the yellow, uh, and the orange. So all I did was I increased the saturation there, and I just found a way to maintain that yellow look and tint, even if that meant I had to pull down on the range. Uh, so that way it's not selecting as many of the yellows as possible. And then I'm just going to pull up on the saturation here, uh, pull down on the hue, and then mess around with the brightness. Uh, and I think that's good for the quick edit. Again, this is something you'd have to play around with your individual image. Uh, but overall, this is what I went for. Now, as you can see, the photo is still pretty dark and I didn't necessarily care for making it a extremely dark photo, but I do want the emphasis to be here in the center. So this is where local adjustments really come in. And the very first adjustment that I'm going to do is really just hone in on the overall image. Uh, and I do that by hitting the letter M and grabbing my masking bug. And then I just click a vignette into the center and I am going to pull this in. So that way I'm darkening the sky and the, uh, the foreground here. Um, so the brightest thing in my image is that sunset. Now, this is counterproductive to what I was just saying about uh, brightening the overall image. So now I'm just going to call this burn all. Uh, and now we're going to start bringing back light into places that I think makes the most sense. And the very first place that I think makes the most sense in this image is down here on the path. 
Now, the way that I brought in light is I use the line masking tool. So if you hit the letter B on your keyboard or M, you'll get to your masking brush options. Uh, I hit the letter M, so it got me the masking bug, but I can click on the line mask tool. And I didn't make like a perfect selection here. Uh, I just followed these little runners that were going uh, up the walkway here. Uh, which, you know, if you haven't been to this memorial, it's really, really uh, well done. And I recommend that you take a chance to go see it. Uh, and then I'm just going to go ahead and click in the center there because I want to paint in and hit done. Now, right now, it looks pretty bad because I have negative exposure. When I pull up on the exposure, you can see it's really starting to bring this photo to life. And I'm enjoying this a whole lot. I really like what it's doing here, but I'm noticing that I may be impacted by that overall burn. And this is just a part of editing photos. You're going to you know, go back and forth sometimes, but that's OK, because I'm just going to pull up on the shadows. And I think that this is getting me uh, where I want to be. And then on this path, because it's so gritty, uh, you know, maybe a structure uh, increase here might do us some good. And, you know, I didn't do this on the last photo, but I'm going to do it this time. I'm going to go ahead and copy this mask. I'm going to come over to effects, hit add, and we're going to add a grunge filter. You know, I use this filter uh, sometimes. And I think now is the time that it might come in handy. So we're just going to paste that mask on there and let's crank up on the amount. And, you know, that that really darkens down uh, that area. So we're going to have to brighten it up just to bring back that brightness uh, and maybe even throw in some detail. Uh, you know, this isn't quite giving me what I was looking for, so I'll leave it at that. But, you know, just this is what happens when you play around with uh, with editing photos. Um, I'll just pull down the opacity and that's looking a little bit, you know, I, I could live with that. Right. So we'll go back to our local adjustment and I may need to open up the shadows a little bit more on that adjustment just because of what that grunge filter just did to my overall image and maybe even contrast it just so that way, uh, you know, it's all about finding that balance. It's really, really bright through here, but I can live with that. The next thing that I want to do is actually start working with the light right in the center of our image. And what I want to do for that is add a new adjustment. I'm going to hit the letter M to get the masking bug again. This time I want to paint into the center. So I'll use edges and then I'm just going to rotate this around. And this one is going to be very unique uh, just because it's going to be small and then it's going to gradually fade out because uh, what I want to do is kind of mimic the fact that the sunlight or the sunset, the light from the sun is uh, shooting its rays or its light through this particular uh, memorial or through the memorial. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm just going to pull up on the exposure and you can see it starts to get brighter. And this is where you have to play with the vibrance and the color and look at how you can really, really enhance that that look overall. Um, and this may be too large of a feather. So I'm just going to pull that down because I don't need it to come all the way through to the darkest portions of my image. I really just need it to impact the lighter portions of my image here. So turning this off and on, you can see it's really just bringing a little bit more light into the, uh, the middle area here. But I do need to control my highlights because I don't want to overdo any of the highlights. Uh, but maybe increase the exposure and maybe even contrast it a little bit just to keep that overall contrast tone in the image. Um, so now that we have that going 
it's time to bring back some detail on these walls to the left and the right, as well as this little uh, piece of the Twin Towers uh, that's down here in the center. So let me just call this Sunlight Enhance, if I can spell. And then it's always a good idea to name your adjustments. Uh, so now this next adjustment I could do it one of two ways. So I'll show you both for the sake of showing stuff. Uh, the first way is I could use the line masking tool uh, because I feel like that just doesn't get enough use um, in the, you know, in the world of on one. So I'm going to go ahead and line mask over the names that are written here on the memorial and hit a plus icon it's darkening right now because you know the default adjustment is to uh negative exposure or it is negative exposure um and then this one i'm actually going to start here and i'm going to come up to here down there um and i'm just eyeballing this because i can't really see what i'm painting in um and then we'll add another adjustment there so now I have two masks uh, with this adjustment. So I'm just going to hit done and we're going to pull up on the exposure quite a bit just to see what we have uh, under there. And you can see like I don't need to ex expose this too much. I just want to show that there is something on the wall here. So the way that I'm going to do that is I am going to pull up on the shadows because if you do it too much, then it gets to look a little uh, not what you want, or at least not what I want. And then I'll pull down on the blacks and let's see what the midtones will get for us. Maybe pull back on the midtones because the intent isn't for anyone to be able to read these names. It's just for people to know like, hey, there is something on the wall. Uh, of these monuments or of this monument and maybe even dial back the exposure just a touch and I can pull this back just a touch all right so we'll call this wall adjustment and you know what I'm even going to crank up on the structure uh, because that'll help with a little bit of the sharpness on this particular uh, adjustment and now what I need to do that I'm noticing is there's like this perfect circle uh, and that's all because of this burn all adjustment that we made earlier. So if I hit the letter M, I can really start to reshape this to make it make more sense to the direction that we want to take the photo in uh, and maybe even feather this just a touch more. So now I'm really getting that uh, that tunnel vision effect that I was going for in the overall image. So the final thing that I need to do is really draw some attention to this piece in the middle here. Uh, and the way that I'm going to do that is, you know, just with another adjustment, we need to move this one to the top just so that way it's not affected by everything else because I do want this to be on top. And I'm just going to use a local adjustment brush. Uh, which this is the second way that you could paint in light. I did say that I was going to teach you two ways when I was working on the wall. Uh, the first way is using that line masking tool that I did use. And then the second way is using this brush, which is just the, the plain old local adjustment or whatever uh, brush. And I don't need this to be like overpowering, right? So I'm going to leave the opacity pretty low. Uh, I have my brush set to 15 and the flow and the feather is at 100. So I'm just going to click until I start to see that uh, monument, you know, really increase. Now, I do need more light uh, and maybe even open up the shadows. You know, you got to work until you can actually see the thing, which uh, depending on how it's coming through on YouTube, it may be a little hard to see. Um, and I'm probably going to have to clean up that the spillage of the mask, but it is starting to come through quite well. Let's see. And maybe contrast it just a touch. And I'll even add in some structure. 
So now I need to clean up the mask and I'm just gonna use the brush again with paint out. I'm gonna make the brush just a little bit larger than the, uh, the brush that I was using to paint in. And then I'm just gonna click using the feather to really drive that back towards the, um, the adjustment. And you can see that that has its own very subtle effect. I'm gonna make the brush just a little bit larger uh, so I can taper it in. And now, you know, this really does bring to light, uh, literally and figure, figuratively, uh, the piece of the Twin Tower, or Twin Towers, um, at the end of this monument, or really the beginning of the monument, because what I failed to tell you is uh, I walked through the monument and then, or a memorial, I should say, not monument, um, and then I turned around and uh, obviously the sun sets in the west, so it was behind me and that's why I turned around, I seen this and said, hey, I'm gonna snap that photo really quick uh, and this is what I got. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed this, uh, not quick edit, I guess. It's just a, me editing in on one. But this is the before and this is the after. Now, if you don't have All One Photo Raw and you're looking to pick that up, check the description box below. You can use the coupon code FREEWILLPHOTOS20, and that's going to save you some money at checkout, regardless of what products you purchase over on the On One website. Now, if you want to come and join the Freewill Photos community, come over to freewillphotos.com and sign up for a free membership and just join a community of really awesome photographers and people uh, where we just talk about editing photos and overall photography. If that's something you want to be a part of, then just join up and uh, I'll love to see you over there. Until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.